Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. My name again is Jeffrey Davis. And you know, if you're listening, all we talk about every day, all day, is entrepreneurship. And, you know, we probably have uh, Entrepreneur uh, Emeritus in the studio today because we have the uh, well-known, and really should be well-known, Len Green from The Green Group. Welcome, Len. Nice to be here with somebody who knows what they're doing. Uh, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I've, I've faking it for a long time. Uh, Len, you know, you send me scripts, you bring material. Uh, I know you are, day and night, your whole life, all about entrepreneurship. Yeah, and it's very easy to do that when you get fired from your first five jobs, you find out you can't work for somebody else. And suddenly you realize you don't know that you're an entrepreneur, but you know that you have to be doing your own thing. And you know that you like to take you know, calculated risks and doing things, and you like the thrill of it. You know, suddenly you start reading books and you realize you're really an entrepreneur. Right. Now, when you meet people, I assume you've met a lot of young people in your life, and they say to you, uh, Professor Green, I want to be an entrepreneur. Where do you go with the conversation? What do you say to them? I ask them to describe what they think the characteristics are of an entrepreneur. And if they say risk takers, I go, bing, no. <laughs> okay, if they say, well, somebody that wants to run their own business but also wants to have a work-life balance, bing. <laughs> you know, those things don't, don't connect, okay? We have to have passion about it or knowledge about it. I go, bing, okay? You have to have, you don't need to know knowledge. You can get people who have specific knowledge. You, everything is really a widget as far as I'm concerned because I've been involved in over 40 different companies. So it really is the thrill of the game and right. then following certain patterns and almost seeing what other successful people have done People say to me, I have a thought about a great product. They go, bing. What do you mean, bing? I said, hey, you know what? The foggiest idea on what the cost is to get it to market or distribution or anything right. like that. I had that conversation this week with somebody. Good. Okay. I want to be in the tea business. Yeah. I went, bing. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's so much easier, Jeff, to say, hey, is there a need for something that's already on the market? Or can I make something on the market even better? I mean, Floyd Roberts came to me a number of years ago. She was Afro-American. She says, I can't find a cosmetic that fits my pigment. I said, well, let's get some people together and, and do something about it. And she came up with the first cosmetic for the Afro-American. Okay, Petridge Farms was, the mother said, hey, I have to get a bread that doesn't have the, these ingredients because my kid's got asthma. Right. It's, Howard Head said, I can't play tennis, so I'll just invent a bigger tennis racket. It just solve a problem out there. And if you're involved in it, then you even know that there's a, a bigger problem because it affects you. Right. Interesting. Now, you know, uh, entrepreneurship, I think it's, uh, you know, 15, 20 years ago, people didn't really talk about entrepreneurship. Business schools were factories for executive development. Uh, but entrepreneurship, I think over the last 10 years, I think the concept has changed a lot and the teaching of entrepreneurship has changed a lot. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And not necessarily for the better. Not necessarily for the better. Because it's become a business. Yeah. Not, it's it, it's it, not really about entrepreneurship as it is a business now. Now it's a business. Now more and more schools. We were fortunate, okay, that we caught Babson when Babson was truly entrepreneurship thing and they had you know, 75 percent of the people teaching were actually entrepreneurs doing business, teaching, using war stories, okay, and, and, and bringing in other entrepreneurs, okay, so that you actually could ask questions of people who are actually in there. Now, there's a lot of new schools that are coming in who actually are doing the same thing Babson did, you know, 15 years ago, whereas Babson now has got a different direction. There's pluses and minuses, I guess. I um, don't believe that that's the right way to go, I believe. And again, some of these younger schools that are, that are breaking out now are actually breaking out and using the same original model, which I think, I think students should have to be challenged in class with actual situations, not theoretical situations. Because when you get out there in the real world, it doesn't follow a formula. They spend so much, they have a couple of courses on business planning. That's bullshit. I, I, you, business plans, you're going to wipe your backside with it because as soon as you get out there, things change. You need to plan right the, the first month. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. I, I agree with you uh, 100%. And, you know, why at this point of your career did you write a book? 
<laughs> that was fascinating. Uh, again, uh, at Babson, we had the person in charge felt that everything had to be standardized to, to, to meet certain standards, and one would be you had to use a book. Okay, and I said to her, there aren't any real books out there that I have found that do it the way the classroom does it, with case studies and, and discussions, and et cetera, and competition. She said, well, you have to have a book. So uh, I was fortunate enough to, the former president of Babson College, who was a fellow by the name of Lynn Schlesinger, and Lynn had written a couple of books. So I called Good him. Good books. Good books, great books. I like them. And yeah. They're incorporated. Probably in one in my trunk of my car that I use regularly. Okay, act. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I actually incorporated some of those things into my book also. So I got somebody who would help Lynn write his book, Paul Brand, and we wrote a book, but it was an interactive book. And again, same thing, Jeff, that, that I do when I start, when we got involved in Blue Buffalo and, and, and Sobeys and some of the other ones. Look to see what's out there already, and then say, hey, if there's a place in the market, somebody has spent a lot of time, money, and energy to, to, to get it, and people are buying it, now find a different way. So I looked, walked around to all the different bookstores and said, what's out there? And, and came to the conclusion that there was a series of books on dummies for entrepreneurship that was great if you've never done something and you had to have it at that level, or some was written by by, by Gates and Welsh and you know and Jobs, okay, which is great if you're in their position, okay, and then a lot of the, the PhD ones. And I said, there's no interactive ones. There's nothing like Jeff and I do in the classroom. Okay. So I wrote this one, okay, and before I did it, I sent down 100 letters to people that I worked with because I was fortunate. How many people in their lifetime? maybe you and me and a few others, have the opportunity to work with very successful people over their life. I, because I was doing taxes for them, and, but instead of just doing your tax return, Jeff. I'm always amazed by how fortunate I've been to have the experience that I had. Yeah. And some of it's just, it just happened. Right. It just happened to be, you know, the big mouth at the right place at the right time. You're probably being a little modest. Maybe that'll get you in the door, but that, that won't keep you going for 10 years. I didn't always stay in the door. It got me in the door. It's true. <laughs> I, I'm very good at getting myself thrown. I used to be really good at getting myself thrown out of the door. Not anymore. Now I know how to keep... I, I'm better at knowing when to shut up. But early in my career, I didn't. <laughs> but again, for your listeners, for a moment, they, they, they're going to have a choice. They're going to have a choice of doing it the standard way, I don't think they can get ahead doing it the standard way. They gotta do it differently. They gotta think outside the box, okay? Right. And they gotta take some calculated risks where they think they have the knowledge of it and they've studied the, the because that's the way to do it. And then I think there's something equally important is know how to hold them and know how to fold them. When I start companies, I do not now do it so I can pass it on to my children because my children have said to me, I'll never work for you. Okay, so I build them to sell them. Right. Uh, what's the most counterintuitive thing that you teach entrepreneurs? Counterintuitive. Explain that one to me. I don't know. It's oh. Something I read in some of your works. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I think I, I have yeah, green Alzheimer's. I, I, I'm kidding. You. Okay, I'm kidding you for the, for the, the effect. Okay. I think the 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 lessons in life are. You know, do the business plan, okay, have enough money before you get started, okay, da 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 da. And it, it really doesn't work that way at all. As I said, you got to have twice as much money as you think you, you want because of the fact that if it does take off, you got to be able to fill those orders and keep on going. You got to surround yourself with good people, and by good people, I mean eight people, people who will give you feedback, people who will not. Give another example. Okay, I got called in for a consulting job. The company was losing a lot of money. I walked in at 8:30. I parked the car. Okay, and the parking lot was getting filled with people who were on the telephone or the computer. Five minutes to nine. Choo! I, I walked upstairs to the guy's office. He said, "You want to see our books and records?" I said, "I don't need." I said, "I got to tell you, you haven't got employees who care." <laughs> he says, "Well, I only hire the best people. They have to go from the best schools." I said, hey, they're not hungry. They're, they're, right. they're treating this thing as a nine to five job. I got a business plan on the weekend, yeah. an investor deck, 
that didn't say when the company was going to make money or when the investors were going to get money back. I went, I don't think investors are going to read that. They go, why not? It's a good idea. I go, That's great. But investors are giving you money. They want to know when they're getting their money back. <laughs> and they want to know what it's going to cost to get it going. You know, it's really shocking. A lot of people are very naive about being, being entrepreneurs. But can I say, how many consultants are in the same category? You, they come in and they want to analyze things and they never ask me about the people. Well, you know, there's a bell curve in every profession, but okay. most, most consultants are not, uh, you know, they were not entrepreneurs themselves, you're right. A lot of them are ex-therapists, counselors, they've, they've, they can barely probably balance a checkbook. So I think you have to have a combination of people and the, the thought and, and what makes sense. And then you've got to analyze who you're presenting it to, whether that person really wants it. How about another quick example? Okay, when I was at Babson, okay, a famous chicken company, okay, sent their middle class, okay, middle level executives to a brain train type of thing, come up with new ideas for the chicken. And we came up with peanut butter and chicken for I mean, we did everything in the world that, that was different. Only a chip beef guy <laughs> could come up with peanut butter and chicken. Okay, keep going. <laughs> you set and yourself cream. up for and that cream. One. Okay. <laughs> uh, and cream. But the, we had ten, about 10 or 15 different ideas that they had come up with to make it instead of just being chicken for a meal, chicken as a snack. Okay? And then top executives came in and they looked at it and said, this is not our image. They didn't accept any of them. Came back a year later and said, how's the company doing? We're not getting any ideas from anybody in the middle manager. Of course not. You didn't listen to them. You made the message loud and clear. You're not interested in their thoughts. Why should they give you? Well, that's advice? clearly the case. Okay. Len, if somebody wants to find you or your book, how would they do that? Just the book is on Amazon.com. It's in the Barnes & Noble stores. It's in the top 50 now in the United States somewhere. If you want to come over to Babson, you can get a copy, or I'll send you one. That's it. I'd probably leave one when you get out of here today. Okay. Will you come back again and talk to us some more about the book and entrepreneurship? Sure. This is all we talk about here. Well, if, if, if this is what... You have more exposure here than you had at Babson. <laughs> <laughs> I got that, Jeffrey. It's a pleasure. And yes. we have a lot of Babson who have, who have t tied into the show over the years. Well, they may have heard me. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for being on the show today. This is Radio Entrepreneurs, and uh, you're talking to a real entrepreneur, or listening to a real entrepreneur, and Len Green, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back after these messages.